glad you guys are all here tonight. You ready to have a good time? Yeah. yeah. Woo! Uh, <laughs> I want to first thank uh, the League of Secular Free Thought for putting this event on. Obviously, we have a great turnout. Um, specifically, my girlfriend, the unbiased moderator, <laughs> who put together uh, the PowerPoint presentation that you're about to watch. So I'm going to present 17 arguments on why eating animals is not ethical. So starting off with my first argument, eating factory farmed animals and byproducts on a regular basis increases your risk of succumbing to the number one killer in America, heart disease. Someone has a heart attack every 45 seconds. In fact, half of us in this room will die from heart disease. 5,000 people have been monitored over 40 years in Massachusetts, and other than a few exceptions, no person whose blood cholesterol level was less, less than 150 has had a heart attack. <coughs> Vegans have a, have a cholesterol level of 128 on average and meat eaters are about 37 times more than that, which amounts to about 172.8. According to, let's see, eating, sorry, here's argument number two, eating factory farmed animals and byproducts on a regular basis increases your risk of succumbing to the number two killer in America, cancer. One third of us, one out of three of us, will actually contact cancer in our lifetimes, and about one fourth of us will succumb to it. Dr. D. Dr. T. Colin Campbell is one of the world's foremost epidemiological scientists and the director of what New York Times called the most comprehensive large study ever undertaken on the relationship between diet and the risk of developing disease. And he said in the book, The China Study, quote, no chemical carcinogen is nearly so important in causing human cancer as animal protein. Argument number three. Eating factory farmed animals and byproducts increases the likelihood of obesity. Vegetarians are 66% less likely to be obese as meat eaters are, and vegans are 90% less likely to be obese. On average, vegans are 10 to 20% lighter than the average meat eater. Argument number four. Supporting the meat industry and dairy industry, that is eating animals and animal byproducts, produced by factory farming is the leading known contributing factor to global warming. But who cares about global warming, right? We all like a warm day at the beach. <laughs> I think we should rebrand it. Catastrophic climate, climate apocalypse, which puts, which puts us on the endangered species list before we ever get to the opportunity to put ourselves on the extinction list along with the other 99.9% of every species that has ever existed. A recent United Nations report stated that the meat industry causes more global warming through emissions of carbon dioxide, methane from animal gas, and nitrous oxide than all the cars, trucks, SUVs, planes, and ships in the world combined. Researchers at the University of Chicago determined that switching to a vegan diet is 50% more effective than switching from a regular car to a hybrid car and reducing your impact on global warming. In other words, there's no such thing as an animal-eating environmentalist. Argument number five, eating factory farmed animals contributes to world hunger. Raising animals for food is grossly inefficient. Animals eat large quantities of grain, soybeans, cats, or sorry, cats. <laughs> feed the other animals. Um, yeah, that's kind of the cause of, uh, of uh, uh, mad cow disease. Part of, part of it was rendering, actually. Putting an animal, a dead animal in a machine, grinding them up, and feeding it back to the cows. Feeding dead cows to cows. Which is now illegal, but they now do it from the pigs to pigs, chickens to chickens. Pretty incredible. Um, but no, I meant oats and corn, but only produce comparatively small amounts of meat, dairy, uh, dairy products or eggs. An acre of prime land can produce 40,000 pounds of potatoes, 30,000 pounds of carrots, 50,000 pounds of tomatoes, but only 250 <coughs> pounds of beef. It takes 16 pounds of grain to produce one pound of meat. Even fish on fish farms lose fed up to five pounds of wild caught fish to produce one pound of farmed fresh fish. Fresh, sorry. Argument number six, eating factory farmed animals contributes to the national debt. Our government gives billions in subsidies to the meat and dairy industry that could otherwise go to paying down the national debt or use for roads, schools, or health care. 
Argument number seven, eating animals from factory farms supports the overgrazing of land, soil erosion, and eventual desertification that renders once fertile land barren. According to a UN report, 30% of the planet's land mass is used in grazing and growing feed. America's beef cattle graze enormous expanses of land, taken together totaling more than 832 million acres. According to scientists at the Smithsonian Institution, an equivalent of seven football fields of land is bulldozed worldwide every minute to create more room for farmed animals. About 44% of all land in the continental U.S. is grazed by cattle or sheep. Argument number eight. Eating factory farmed animals supports the leading contributing factor to plant species in the U.S. becoming threatened and going extinct. Argument number nine. Eating factory farmed animals placed a serious strain on our water supply. Nearly half of all the water in the U.S. goes to raising animals for food. Everything from watering crops that farmed animals eat, providing drinking water for billions of animals each year, and cleaning away the filth in factory farmed animals, transporting trucks and slaughterhouses. You save more water by not eating a pound of meat than you do by not showering for six months. Eating factory farmed animals contributes to the decimation of the Amazon rainforest. According to Greenpeace, in 2004 and 2005 alone, 2.9 million acres of Amazon was destroyed to grow crops to feed chickens and other, an and other animals. The rainforests are being raised at the rate of 2,000 trees a minute. Much of it used to grow soy in order to feed beef cattle. Argument number 11. Eating factory farmed animals produces an increasingly <coughs> unmanageable amount of shit that pollutes land, water, and air. <coughs> Roughly 89,000 pounds of feces is produced per second in the U.S. 86, which, let's see, for instance, just one 1,000 cow dairy operation generates 86,000 pounds of manure every day. 1.37 billion tons of manure is produced in the U.S. each year. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the runoff from factory farm pollutes our waterways more than any other industrial source combined. The EPA reported that chicken, hog, and cattle excrement has polluted 35,000 miles of rivers in 22 states and contaminated groundwater in 17 states. A report by the California State Senate stated, studies have shown that animal waste, that is lagoons, emit toxic airborne chemicals that cause inflammatory, immune, irritation, and neurochemical problems in humans. There are no meaningful, meaningful federal guidelines that regulate how factory farms <coughs> treat, store, and dispose of the millions, um, dispose of the billions plus pounds of concentrated, untreated animal excrement that they produce each year. This waste may be left to rot in huge lagoons or sprayed over crop fields. The concentration of parasites, bacteria, and chemical contaminants in animal excrement, excrement can wreak havoc on the ecosystems affected by farm runoff and can sicken people who live near these farms. Argument number 11. Eating seafood, including shrimp and fish, supports an industry that is overfishing our oceans. 90% of our large marine life are already extinct. According to the UN, by 2050, the oceans will be essentially fishless. More than 800 dolphins and whales die every day as a result of getting tangled in fishing nets. More than 20,000 sea turtles die each year after getting hooked on long lines. 100,000 100, seabirds are hooked and killed each year in Chilean waters alone. Methods such as dredging for shrimp destroy 60 billion of pounds of un, unwanted marine life each year. They literally drop you know, a, a net that hits the bottom of the ocean and they just scrape it because the shrimp are bottom dwellers. So they scrape the oceans and pull everything that they capture <coughs> up. And these nets are huge large enough to swallow 12, jump, uh, 12 747 jumbo boats. <coughs> Every pound of shrimp that is caught results in the killing of 10 pounds of other marine life. The Canadian government caters to the fishing industry by approving of a seal hunt each year that kills over 200,000 baby harp seals. Essentially, the, the fishing industry is convinced that these harps are eating the cod that they're trying to catch. And so they kill the baby seals so that they won't eat the codfish. But the codfish is only about 10% of the seal's diets. Finally, we should, should we support an industry that devastates huge expanses, expanses of space to produce relatively small amounts of food? 
The fishing industry provides only about 1% of total calories eaten by humans. Furthermore, it's eaten typically a lot of the large fish like salmon, um, halibut, tuna, is shipped to European countries, to America, to wealthy people who can afford buying it. So it doesn't you know, just feed poor people around the world. It's typically catered to the rich. <coughs> Argument number 13, eating factory farmed animals increases the chance of antibiotics prescribed by your doctor that they won't work. Roughly 70% of antibiotics used in the U.S. each year are given to animals who are used for food. So if you're eating the, the animals that, are, that already have the antibiotics in them, that makes you immune um, to the effectiveness of those antibiotics when you're given, when they're given to you. Eating factory farmed animals contributes to an industry that harms and injures workers at double the national rate. In fact, factory farm workers have the highest number of on-the-job injuries. 62% of workers say they have been injured in the past year. Furthermore, in February of 2002, a study concluded by Iowa State University and the University of Iowa Study Group found that as many 70% of U.S. factory farm workers suffer from acute bronchitis and 25% battle chronic bronchitis. Argument number 15, eating animals from factory farms intensifies the energy crisis we face. It takes more than 11 times as much fossil fuel to make one calorie from animal protein as it does to make one calorie from plant protein. Simply add up the energy intensive stages of raising animals for food. One, grow massive amounts of corn, grain, and soybeans with all the required tilling, irrigation, crop dusters. Two, transport the grain and soybeans to feed manufacturers on gas guzzling 18 wheelers. Three, operate the feed mills requiring massive energy expenditures. Four, transport the feed to the factory farms, again in gas guzzling vehicles. Five, operate the factory farms. Six, truck the animals many miles to slaughter. Seven, operate the slaughterhouse. Eight, transport the meat to processing plants. Nine, operate the meat processing plants. Ten, transport the meat to grocery stores. Eleven, keep the meat refrigerated or frozen in the stores until it's sold. Argument number 16, eating animals supports a ranching industry that over the past century have killed billions of prairie dogs and uncountable number of wolves, coyotes, and even bear. In 2002 alone, the USDA's Wildlife Services Division, working to protect cattle ranching, killed 86,000 coyotes, 5,000 foxes, 380 black bear, and 190 wolves. And finally, argument number 17, eating factory farmed animals supports an industry that causes an immense amount of totally unnecessary suffering and death. And I want to show you a short clip to give you an example of some of the kinds of uh, tortures they face. In the next few minutes, you will be given an eye-opening look behind the closed doors of modern farms, hatcheries, and slaughter plants, revealing the journey that animals make from farm to fridge. For nearly their entire four-month pregnancies, mother sows are locked in narrow metal stalls barely larger than their own bodies. Many of the animals develop open sores and scratches. Workers often kick, hit, and yell at pigs to move them. Soon after birth, piglets are castrated by workers who cut into their skin and rip out their testicles. Next, the workers chop off their tails. Both of these painful procedures are nearly always done without anesthesia. Many animals die from botched mutilations. Piglets who become sick or injured or who are not growing quickly enough are killed. Common killing methods include throwing animals into bins and painfully gassing them with carbon dioxide. Others are killed by being slammed headfirst into the ground. At a factory farm in Ohio, workers killed injured sows by hanging them on a forklift to be slowly strangled to death, a practice defended by the pork industry. Pigs raised for meat typically live only five to six months, a mere fraction of their natural lifespan in overcrowded pens like this. Workers frequently tattoo the animals with ID numbers by hitting them with metal spiked mallets. Once pigs have reached market weight, they are sent to slaughter. At the slaughterhouse, pigs are knocked in the head with a steel rod, hung upside down, and have their throats slit. 
Improper stunning condemns many pigs to having their throats slit while they are fully conscious and suffering. Others are even scalded alive in the hair removal tanks. From the moment they hatch, the egg industry subjects chicks to horrors few of us can even imagine. At the hatchery, workers quickly and roughly sort the males from the females. Because male chicks don't lay eggs and do not grow quickly enough to be raised profitably for meat, they are killed within hours after hatching. Male chicks are typically thrown into giant grinding machines while still alive. This practice is deemed standard and acceptable by the egg industry. Another killing method is to drop male chicks into trash bags to be smothered or suffocated. More than 200 million unwanted male chicks are killed on their first day of life each year in the United States. The females have it even worse, destined for a life of prolonged cruelty. To reduce pecking induced by overcrowded living conditions, workers use a hot blade or laser to remove part of the chick's beaks. This mutilation can cause both acute and chronic pain. After debeaking, the birds are moved to cages where they will spend the rest of their lives. Nearly 95% of egg-laying hens spend their lives confined in tiny wire cages like this. Most birds never see sunlight or breathe fresh air. They are packed so tightly they cannot even spread their wings, walk or turn around without pushing other birds aside. The harsh and unrelenting environment of the cage takes its toll, often leading to severe feather loss, open wounds, and birds trapped in cage wire. For many hens, the stressful confinement is too much, leading to premature death. Undercover investigations at egg farms from coast to coast have revealed a culture of cruelty and neglect, including workers stomping on birds, throwing live hens on dead piles and in trash cans, and painfully mangling bird spines in botched attempts to break their necks. At one or two years of age, when a hen's egg production begins to decline, she is violently ripped from her cage. Workers often fling the birds into metal carts where they are painfully suffocated with carbon dioxide. Crowded by the thousands into filthy sheds, chickens and turkeys are denied many of their most basic natural behaviors and needs, such as fresh air and exercise. Through genetic selection, chickens and turkeys raised for meat have been bred to grow so large so quickly that many suffer crippling leg disorders, chronic joint pain, and even fatal heart attacks. Sick or injured birds often have their necks broken. Others are clubbed to death. Those who live to reach market weight are thrown into transport crates and loaded onto trucks bound for slaughter plants. Handling is often violent and frequently causes bruises, broken bones and other injuries. At the slaughter plant, the birds are dumped from their crates, then roughly snapped upside down into moving shackles by their fragile legs. From there, the birds are dragged through an electrified vat of water which renders them paralyzed, but not necessarily unconscious. They are then pulled across a blade which slices their throats, causing blood to pour from their necks. Some of the birds who miss the blade have their throats slit or their heads ripped off by a backup killer. Other birds are drowned and scalded in the tanks of hot water designed to loosen the birds' feathers. Cows produce milk for the same reasons that humans do, to nourish their young. But calves on dairy farms are dragged away from their mothers and violently killed, all so that humans can have the milk instead. The majority of today's dairy cows are confined on factory farms. Some spend almost their entire lives standing on concrete floors. Others are crammed into massive mud lots. Workers subject young cows to painful mutilations and amputations. 
Here, a worker cuts off a cow's tail, slicing through her sensitive skin, nerves and bone without any painkillers. Another routine practice is dehorning, burning into the calves' skulls to remove their budding horns. Painkillers are rarely used. A 2010 undercover investigation at a dairy farm in Ohio revealed a farm worker stabbing cows with pitchforks, beating them in the head with crowbars, and punching baby calves. Injuries and illness often run rampant in filthy, disease-ridden factory farm environments. Cows too sick or injured to stand are called downers and are often left to slowly suffer and die from their injuries. At a fraction of their natural lifespan, the so-called spent dairy cows are prodded under transport trucks and shipped to slaughterhouses. An undercover investigation at a slaughterhouse in California revealed down dairy cows being kicked, shocked, pushed with forklifts, and water hosed in the mouth and nostrils in an effort to get them to the kill floor. Most cattle raised for beef endure several mutilations without painkillers, including castration and hot iron branding. Most spend the last few months of their lives in overcrowded feedlots, standing in their own waste. Unreliable, stunning practices at the slaughterhouse condemn many cattle to having their throats cut and their limbs hacked off while still alive and conscious. Undercover investigations at kosher slaughterhouses in the United States have documented the routine practice of cutting open the throats of fully aware and alert cattle. Fish and other sea animals are sensitive, intelligent creatures who have a demonstrated capacity to suffer pain. Massive trawling nets indiscriminately drag hundreds of tons of fish and other animals along the ocean floor. As they are dragged up from the ocean depths, the fish undergo excruciatingly painful decompression. The extreme changes in pressure can rupture their swim bladders and pop out their eyes. They are then tossed on board where the surviving fish either suffocate or are crushed to death. Others are still alive when they are hacked apart on these floating slaughterhouses. Untold millions of dolphins, turtles, and other non-target aquatic animals are also killed by ocean trawler nets each year. Today, approximately one in five fish consumed worldwide is raised in captivity. Like factory farmed animals on land, farm-raised fish are crowded by the tens of thousands in small, disease and excrement-ridden areas for their entire lives. When fish reach market weight, they are loaded onto tanker trucks and shipped to slaughter, where common killing methods include slow suffocation, Farmed animals are every bit as intelligent, curious, and capable of feeling pain and suffering as the dogs and cats so many of us know and love. If you are at all moved by this film, please do your part. Make a commitment today to explore a vegan diet. It could be one of the best decisions of your life. By withdrawing our support of this cruel and violent system, we can put our ethics on the table and make a statement for a kinder and more compassionate society for all animals. For delicious vegan recipes, nutritional information, and tips on making the transition to a plant-based diet, please visit chooseveg.com. Killing animals for our taste buds should no longer be acceptable, except, except under circumstances where, for one reason or another, eating non-human animals is necessary for humans uh, for healthy survival. 
There's a profound joy knowing that our diet can be healthy, nonviolent, and environmentally friendly. Choose three times a day to live long, to speak for those who are unable to speak for themselves, and to save the environment. Go vegan. Thank you.